Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we go over some basic seedling maintenance for peppers. So let's go. Lately I've been making a lot of videos showing you how to go about sowing the seeds for various different vegetables as well as flowers. I thought it would be good to start making videos that show you now what? What do we do next? Because I don't want to just make videos where I'm showing you how to start the seed and then how to plant the plant outside in the landscape. I think it's important to follow the progress of that seed once it's planted to the next stages. Because there are some of you that might be following along that want to know what to do next. My average last frost date is May 15th. And that's not based on my zone. That's based on my zip code. So if you go to like the Farmer's Almanac and you put in your zip code, you'll know what your last average frost date is. Keep that in mind when you're watching my video as well as looking at other information on when to start various seeds. Today is February 27th and I started my pepper seeds on February 15th. So some time has passed and I made a video showing you my process. I like to use these restaurant to go containers and I like to sow my seeds very heavily in a container like this because it saves a lot of room under my grow lights. And I mentioned during that video I like to use a seed starting mix which is two parts of peat moss to one part of vermiculite. You can buy your own seed starting mix or you can make your own. And you don't have to use peat moss, you can use cocoa core. We used a pre-moistened seed starting mix. We sowed the seeds at the depth that's recommended on the seed packet. And then we covered this tray with clear plastic wrap just to act as a humidity dome. And then this tray went on a heat mat. I like to put my peppers and tomatoes in plants that take a long time to germinate on a heat mat. A lot of times you want to do your research for various seeds and they will tell you what the temperature is required to germinate the seeds. Peppers like a warm temperature. So my heat mat goes to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for the soil for these seeds to germinate. And I think that's one reason why these seeds germinated as quickly as they did. Within seven days, I started seeing a lot of germination within this tray. As soon as a number of my seeds started germinating, at that time, I removed this tray off of my heat mat. I removed the clear plastic wrap or the humidity dome, and I put this under my LED shop lights, which are right behind me. And my lights turn on from 5 a.m. until 9 p.m. So they're on for quite a bit of time, which is what our seedlings need. And I had the lights down about one to two inches above the seedlings. And that's very important. You want that because you don't want leggy seedlings. You don't want your seedlings to be reaching for the light. And during the past few days, I've been taking my time. I've been pricking out the seedlings out of this tray and I've been potting them up or up potting them into six cell packs. However, I only have so much time each day to be pricking out seedlings. So I do what I can and there are seedlings that just aren't ready to be pricked out. So when it comes to this tray, even though it's under my LED shop lights, I do need to make sure that I'm watering it. I will be showing you my process from, for bottom watering this type of tray in case you also are sowing a bunch of seeds in a tray and you want to know how to bottom water. And in today's video, I'm also going to show you my process for pricking out these seedlings as well as how to bottom water a six cell pack. When it comes to potting up my seedlings, I like to move to more of a potting mix. I feel like the seedlings are strong enough and the roots need that. So I make my own potting mix and it's seven parts of peat moss to two parts of perlite. And I've played around with that mixture over the last few years. You can definitely buy your own potting mix. You can also make your own potting mix and you can play around with the formula for your potting mix. You want to make sure that it's something that's well draining because at this point with the seedlings you want them to be in some sort of potty mix that drains well. No seedling likes it when it's too wet. If the potty mix is too wet it's not a good environment for your plants. That can cause the roots to rot which can cause the plants to die. And when it comes to fertilizing I don't fertilize my plants until there are at least a couple of sets of leaves on the plant. The first set of leaves that you see are called the cotyledons. And I wait until I see at least a couple of sets of what's called the true leaves. So first you get the cotyledon, then you get the first true set of leaves. After that, I wait until I get the second set of true leaves. And that's when I begin fertilizing. 
you don't want to give too much fertilizer. You want to use about half the strength recommended on the back of the package of whatever fertilizer you choose to use. And after my pepper plants have outgrown their six cell packs, and I'll know that they've outgrown it because at the very bottom of the cell pack, I will see the roots coming out from the bottom. Then they will go into their final destination, which will be a three inch pot. I'll be sure to show you that in a future video when that time comes. I'm going to take you in for a closer look to show you my process for pricking out these seedlings and also my process for bottom watering. Here's the clear plastic wrap that originally was on the restaurant to go container. And you can see that we had planted some purple bell pepper and that was on February 15th and also the sweet California wonder. I've already pricked out a number of the purple bell pepper. And on this side, this is also a bell pepper, but this is the California Wonder bell pepper. I've pricked out a bunch of it, but I left some here so that I could show you my process. Here's the potting mix that I like to make. And again, it's a mixture of peat moss as well as perlite. And you can see that it's nice and fluffy. This potting mix has already been pre-moistened. What I did was I added boiling hot water, and then I mixed all of this up. I covered this, and I let it sit until it cooled down. And the reason I like to use boiling hot water is to kill off the possibility of any fungus gnat eggs that were in the peat moss. Notice as I'm squeezing the potty mix, no water is dripping out from this. And that's good. You don't want it to be too wet. And you can see that the potty mix is holding its form, and that's the right consistency for the potty mix. I like to reuse my six cell packs from year to year. And I take good care of them. I do sterilize them at the end of the season. Although you can notice this one's dirty because I've been using it inside and I know that the plants that I'm using it with don't have any sort of issues. So I'm safe using it over and over again right now while I'm inside. But I do often get six cell packs from friends. I get them for free from people that come to my plant nursery. And it, it's a good idea to sterilize in between uses. So what I'm going to do is fill this with the potting mix. The key with when you're filling up any sort of pot or tray is you don't want it to have any air pockets. So it's a good idea to just move the soil around and lightly press on it. And even though we're trying to get out the air pockets, we also want to make sure that we're not pressing down too hard. And if you find any big pieces in your potting mix or seed starting mix, you want to always make sure you remove those. And the reason for that is as the plants are growing, you don't want any chunks of wood to get in the way. And that's it. You also don't want to press too hard because if you press too hard, you're compacting the soil and that's never good for root development for any plant. I like to use a pen when I'm pricking out my seedlings, but you can use whatever you have handy. And you want to very gently just get under the plant. And you never want to handle a plant by the stem. You always want to handle it by the leaf. And there's our first little seedling. And I'm not going to worry about this part right here. That's just the seed. And it will eventually come off when it's ready. I'm going to make a hole. And I want basically the root and the stem to be under the soil, but I want the green part, the leaves, to be above the soil. And then what you want to do is just press the soil around the base of the plant. It's also a good idea to make sure wherever you're transplanting from, which in this case is this tray here, you want to make sure that the seedlings have been well watered because you don't want them to go under too much stress or too much shock. And that's it. There's one little seedling. And the reason I'm planting them deeper is that I want them to be nice, strong plants. I don't want them to be spindly. I don't want them to be leggy. And most plants benefit from burying them deeper.
I like to add labels to my six packs. And you'll notice here that this is a label that says stock on it. I decided not to grow stock this year. I do reuse my labels from year to year. So what I'm going to do is just cross this out and I'm going to write on the other side the variety of peppers that we just transplanted. There we go. Next, I'm going to show you my process for bottom watering a restaurant to go container that I've used for multi sowing many of my seeds. This tray has a bunch of holes that I created in the bottom of it. I just used a drill and I made the holes in the bottom and I made sure I made plenty of holes, but you can use whatever you want to make the holes. This is a tray that came with a toaster oven. It's seen better days, but it's serving its purpose. I just add some water to the bottom, and at this point, the water does not have fertilizer in it. And then I take my tray, and it will very quickly absorb the water. Now, keep in mind that the soil right now is pretty dark. I recently watered this tray, but for demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show you my process. You want to do that when you feel that the tray is very light and the soil on top looks like a light brown color. That's a good indicator that it's time to give this some water. And once the soil gets to be a dark color, like the color it is right now, then you know that the tray has had plenty of water and you don't wanna water it anymore until you see that the soil is turning a light brown color and or the tray seems very light again. This will get put back under my LED shop lights until I'm ready to prick out some more seedlings. And when it comes to my six cell packs, same process. If I only have a few cell packs that I'm trying to water, they would go in a tray like this. You can use any tray that you want. I also have the 10 by 20 trays that I use quite a bit, and I will just add water to the base of those trays as well to bottom water a full amount of cell packs that I have. But again, for demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show you a cell pack like this has holes in the bottom of it. And what it's doing is it's watering the seedlings from the bottom and it's wicking the water up to the top. So a good indicator to know when your six packs need water is when the top of the soil is light brown. And again, or if you pick it up and it seems very light. One thing that I want to caution you with is when it comes to watering your seedlings, don't give them too much water. Give them enough water, but it's good for them to dry out a little bit in between. And this, again, is nice and watered, so it's good to go. Right now, my LED shop lights are turned off because of the video, but normally they'd be turned on. I wanted to show you a couple of things. When it comes to raising and lowering my LED shop lights, I have a chain here, and I basically just count up a number of chain lengths. So right now, I have it set to a certain length that is perfect for my little seedlings that are under here. Again, you want to make sure that your lights are nice and close to your seedlings. You don't want your lights to touch them, but they should be about one to two inches above your seedlings. And then as the seedlings get taller, the lights raise. I like to make sure that the plants that are on a certain shelf are all of the same height so that they're all getting the similar amount of light at the same time. I really hope that you found this video helpful. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these type of videos for all the different plants that I'm growing from seed. And that way, if you're growing the same plants that I am, this will give you some information on what to do next and how the seedlings are looking. If you have any questions, please be sure to drop it in the comments below. Until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.